everybody, Jill here. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be taking you through a makeup look. I'm going to try my very best to recreate, I would say, probably recreate the idea of the makeup I sported in last week's wig chat. I had a few of you um, wish that I would do that. I got quite a few compliments on my makeup, which thank you. I really appreciate that. I, however, realized because it, I didn't do, you know, I didn't put the makeup on thinking that I was going to be doing a tutorial or that I was going to be recording a get ready with me. So I just kind of play and grab this and that. And I happened to grab an Anastasia palette that apparently they don't sell anymore because I looked for it. I couldn't find it anywhere. And I'm like, gosh, dang it. And it's the Norvina palette. It's actually really pretty. I'm not sure what happened, but nonetheless, I don't want to show you a look that you can't recreate if you really want to use exactly what I did. You know, I always encourage to just sort of look in your own collection and see if you can find something close. You know, you don't have to purchase exactly what that influencer is showing you. It gives you sort of more of an idea of some um, inspiration maybe of something you can create with what you have at home. But I know that some of you really like to do that. So I am not going to be able to use any of the eyeshadows, unfortunately, that I used that day. I did choose some that I think will come close. However, I am going to tweak it a little bit because I'm wearing something a little different than I did that day. I'm going to use the same foundation, although I love this foundation. I love the finish. I love everything about it, except for this is not a good color match for me. So when I do wear this, I have to kind of make sure I put it a little everywhere. That doesn't mean you have to put a ton on. It never comes off on my clothes. Um, I don't go that crazy when I start doing my neck or whatever, but I definitely have to do that. I do love this foundation, however. It, it is Hourglass, the Ambient Foundation. This one is just, even though I, I have kind of more of a neutral complexion, I do have a tiny little bit of yellow undertone, plus something that has a little bit of that yellow undertone cuts any kind of redness that I have in my face. But this one is just a little too, too yellow. I'm also going to try out these today. I found these on Amazon and I love the idea of a flat side and a point because, you know, I can use it everywhere else that I want to. I even like the point for putting on cream blush because I do like to put my cream blush just kind of right there. I'm going to squirt this right on the sponge. Just going to start with two squirts. And I'm going to kind of let it work on just kind of down here so you can see not the best when it's all on it looks fine but you know how it goes i ordered this online it was expensive i ordered it off of the i think it was sephora so I should have I should have went in so I could at least try a sample. I really highly recommend you do that. But I do love this foundation. It's it's buildable to a medium coverage, but I like the fact that it's not super heavy. And I can put a little more in places that that I want to. So when my budget allows me and when I run out of this, because I'm just making this work in the meantime, because again, it's one of my more expensive foundations, I will definitely try to get a better color and I'll go in person. I'm going to take this off for now while I do this. That is a Katia necklace, by the way. And the pendant on the other side is engraved and it says, trust the journey. I love that message. So again, I'm not using a ton down in here. I'm just bringing it back. Yes, I do this. 
I don't want to turn my head and, and literally see a stop and start. People see us, you know, from all angles. We're not just from the front. So keep that in mind. So the next thing that I have been doing pretty consistently, and I really like it, <laughs> I happen to have, you know, this one and I don't like using it by itself because again, I, it ended up being just too yellow to use as an actual concealer, even though it is a concealer. But I have been using this shade, which is called Natural, I believe. I'll correct that if I'm wrong. But I've been using it as a color corrector. So I've been using it to kind of cancel out these dark areas here. And then I've been going in with as currently my favorite. This has trumped my Lancome concealer. I love this. I really am enjoying this. This is by Winky Lux. And I love it. So between these two, and they play really well together. So yeah, I'm gonna go do that. Well, I'm not going anywhere, but I'm gonna do that. So again, I'm just using this more as a color corrector. So I'm gonna put it right where I need it the most. I do have a hollow, some darkness right there at the edge. Okay, I've been also enjoying this little doodad here. These are really inexpensive mushroom kind of this is like a super soft very similar to what kind of those sponges are made out of and I have been enjoying using it to do this kind of thing concealer correctors concealer I'm just gonna put it right here on my ring finger I rub that together and this is gonna really brighten things up I'm even going to put it right in here, down in here. And I think now I'm going to use the flat side of this. Got a little bit more room to cover, but do you see how nicely the two of those together work? Very nice. So we got a good base going on now. This is exactly what I used that day. The, these are my go-to lately. I've been using it every day. I change up my foundation pretty often. Okay, my next step is contouring. I am gonna dedicate a, a short video on contouring, the importance of contouring, especially when you're over 50, how easy it is, how to make it work for your features. I just wanna dedicate an entire video to it. I would love for you to experiment with it. I would love for you to really hone in your contouring skills. It's very easy, it's very intuitive because it changes how then you look at your makeup and, and all of that. Because then your makeup, you're not utilizing, for instance, your blush. You're not utilizing your blush to do the contouring for you. You are now just utilizing it to add a pop of color, a flush of color to your skin. You're letting that contouring sculpt the face, giving you this really natural, nice sculpted look. If you were to draw a picture of a face just with lines on a white piece of paper, it's just gonna look like that. It's gonna look like a face, it's got eyes, it's got that face shape, the lips, and that's all it has. When you start contouring and shading, that's what really molds and brings that face forward. It sculpts it, it makes a 2D image look 3D. It's the same concept with your face. You can, you can, emphasize features you want to you can put hollows maybe there aren't any you can really kind of make a feature sort of disappear more you have control over how to manipulate light because that's all makeup really is when it comes to this whole step is manipulating light with highlighters and contours do you want the light to sink in and disappear and create a shadow a hollow or do you want the light to bounce back at you and create you know to bring that whatever that is forward anyway that's the kind of thing that I want to talk about when I do this video and I keep saying I'm gonna do it I haven't done it yet and I really want to this <laughs> this has been my recent grab I really have fallen in love with this um, it's called InstaSculpt and it's by Revlon I use the lightest color to, 
to do this with during the day. If I were going out in the evening hours, I would probably go ahead and go to the darker color. But today, I'm gonna use this color to do my contouring. And when we get to the lips, I am not gonna align my lips with any kind of lip pencil. I'm actually gonna contour them with this uh, color as well. It's my favorite way to do my lips. As long as I use a light nude color, it all works really well. It's, it gives me a very soft look. I can uh, kind of give this look where I have maybe a little bit bigger lips than I already do. And anyway, let's get going on this. I'm gonna, I, I use various uh, different brushes when I contour, actually. I, I use any of these, uh, maybe even some others that I don't have. Is this the same same one? No, this one's a little bit shorter and rounder. But yeah, I, I've been known to use all of these. I think today I'm gonna go in with this one. This one happens to be 111. I do want to say one thing I told myself I wasn't going to talk when I did this, but the younger crowd, the younger influencers, you'll hear them say, don't take it on top here in your jawline, take it under your jawline. But when you get jowls and when you start getting jowls or if you have them, if you went underneath that and really did stick to under, Basically what you're doing now is accentuating those. So you do have to go over the top of them. You wanna kind of keep that jawline where it was maybe five, 10 years ago, rather than accentuate that it's dropped. So keep that in mind if you're dealing with that. I'm not sure where you are in your aging journey, but um, that's just a little tip. That's something that, that I have been doing and I've noticed a difference um, when I have done that. Look at contouring also as something that is, you want it to be subtle. Subtlety is the key to a lot of different things regarding makeup when you get older. Um, it's the subtle illusions that can be really powerful and that powerfulness, <laughs> um, you might not even see, but it's there, it is there. So. Yeah, you, you want to be subtle with it, but enough, you know, to where you are definitely doing something. Now, I, to be honest, I'm just using this more as a bronzer at this point, just kind of warm up the rest here. If you have a very long, skinny nose, you're not gonna wanna do this. You're just gonna, accentuate that and it's not an automatic step is what I'm saying that you have to do or that you see people doing and that you feel like well this is just part of contouring no I I do this because my nose is a, is a bit broad and I want I'm also a little tiny bit broad through here as well so I do like to reduce that a little bit and again it's very subtle but it it is something that I like to do. So I'm bringing this right up into my eyes at this point. This is all, you know, I might as well just sort of contour my eyes while I'm at it <laughs> a little. Of course, I'm gonna go in through and take, take my eye look and bring it, you know, a little further in that step.
I'm going to take the buffer and I'm going to buff this. I want it to look very soft and you're going to want to do that after every step of your makeup application. It just takes a couple seconds. This is 105. There are two highlighters in here. There's this one and this one. I'm actually gonna use both of them, but when we're all done here, I am also gonna use a blush. Peach kind of highlighter. And so I'm gonna bring that down kind of on top, pretty much kind of where I would almost put that blush. But I used this that day and I loved the underneath sort of warmth it gave, gave me. Um, you know, it wasn't just like using this there where I was just getting that glow. It kind of added a little something and I really liked it. So now I'm going to go in with this one. I could do this when I was done. I may have, but I don't know. I'm doing it now, I guess. And I'm just going to put this a little higher. Not up here. I don't want that to look puffy, but I'm just going to bring this up a little higher Kind of right through there maybe a little bit here yeah we'll just stop there I'm all right so we're done with this i'm going to put this aside and now before we go any further and do the blush and all of that we're going to do the eyes so these are the palettes that i i chose to try to recreate this um, and these are both of my makeup by mario palettes so this is the matte collection very nice i really love love but then, now I reach for this all the time, especially if a particular palette that I'm using doesn't have this one I'm looking for. And these are the metallics. And these are wonderful. You get amazing payoff. So there's like, okay, I wanna use the metallic, but I hope it gives me good payoff. You can bet on it with any of these. Yeah. Again, this isn't gonna be exactly the same, but I'm gonna do the same sort of techniques that I did. And I'm gonna to try to get it as close as I can. All right, so I'm gonna start with a brightener. There's a vanilla color here. I'm gonna use that like I like, which would be right here in the corner and I just bring it up a little bit. That's where I'm really dark, so I wanna make sure I have a bright color. So I'm gonna do that. This is pretty because it's not pure white. I never use pure white, ever. It's just too harsh. I'm gonna go now with this one. This is kind of a mustardy yellow color. I'm gonna go in with a pretty floofy dome brush. So. All right, I'm gonna grab a BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy Collab a503 so we're going to go into that color i just showed you i'm going to load it up and i'm going to tap it really well on my desk here and i'm going to take this and i'm just going to gingerly really lightly kind of do this and we're just i'm going to bring it on my eyelid as well it's going to just kind of the only thing I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna brush it down here because I don't, I wanna keep this lifted. I don't wanna kinda encourage it to bring my whole look down. I'm not taking it all the way up to my brow, but pretty close, pretty close. I'm gonna reload and get the other eye caught up here very very similar to the color I use so yay I'm gonna take my well I call it my blender brush this is BK Beauty as well and I should have this one memorized it's 201 okay I am now gonna go into a flat packing brush this is a Sigma and it is called soft focused shader or soft focus shader and it is number e52 it's a great one to have because look at this this is a great packing brush it also really allows you to cover a good amount of ground and i also like that it's pinched like that because man i can really lift that lash line and get it down there uh, really easily okay so i'm going to go in with this sort of it's, it's actually more of a cooler rust color 
And we are gonna put this along the lash line first, and then we are gonna take it through the entire mobile lid area and even up a bit. So I'm gonna lay this kind of right here in the center. I, I like starting in the center because that way I'm not tempted to bring it down um, too low there. Don't be concerned. I know, I know. You're thinking crepiness. It's so hard. This brush really makes it nice and easy. And then I'm going to kind of blend it, make sure we don't have skipping. I am going to kind of put it here. I'm not going to put it in here, but I do want to cover this corner part of my lid a little anyway, soften, soften as it gets to the top. I'm gonna get the other eye caught up here. What do you think? That's pretty, isn't it? Boy, that is really pretty. So yeah, don't be afraid to kind of blend it up. We want the most of that intensity though to definitely be right there on the lid. So now I'm gonna take that, that blending brush because remember we wanna blend after every application. And if I skip one, you can call me out and I might have. Now I'm going to take that same brush right here. I'm going to wipe it off. I am, Jill, because you didn't bring anything to wipe off anything with. So pretend I wipe that off. And we're going to go back in to this one and we're going to line that down there with that color. So I'm loading both sides, but concentrating this time just kind of on the end of this brush. And I like to tap, open my eye really wide and tap it in at first. And you'll avoid skipping doing that. And then I'm gonna kind of squint my eye like this uh, because I want to make this look more like a contour color. You know, we're gonna contour the eyes. Because remember, think of that white piece of paper and if you were to draw the shape of an eye and draw an eye, if you contour, you know, underneath that lid, it's going to sculpt the eye, more or less. And it's going to really open the eye up, really. Okay, so do you see that really we created more of a contour shadow underneath the eye rather than a stop and start line? Um, it might look a little funny right now, but when we get the mascara on and all of that and we get our brows on, everything comes together. You know what? I do love how bright that is, but I feel like it's almost a little too bright right in there. So I'm going to go in with this. It's even more vanilla-y. It's got a little bit more of, what would you call that? This buttery color. I'm going to take that on my pinky and I'm going to soften that just a little. I just feel like it's almost a little too bright for this particular look. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to take my blender brush. What did I do with it? Okay, I'm just going to do that. And then. Okay, I like that better. It's still bright, but it's not like, woo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I think what I'll do, that, let me swatch, I'm going to swatch this one. Ooh, ooh, that's pretty. That's, that's pretty. Um, let's see, let me swatch this one. That's also pretty. Um, let me swatch this one. Oh, whoa. Ooh, I didn't think I was gonna like this, but you know why I like this one? Because it's lighter and even though it has this coppery, if you turn, you know, my finger and you look around, it does have a little copperiness going on, but it also has this pink color here. I just put this on, guys, because I was cold. But it has, you know, do you see do you see the little pink in here? It has a little bit of that. So I think this is going to be the one we're going to use. Yay. Okay. This one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, ooh, I'm excited as I shove that aside. So, yeah, we're going to... Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Look at that. 
Oh, this is so fun. This is so fun. You need to experiment with this. Go in with like the, uh, the rich part of the look right on your eyelids. It's something different. I don't normally do that. And I, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do this more often. It's so fun. And then just find like a color that will work together, but really kind of make things pop. And hello, hello. Ooh, oh. wow, wow. And I don't want to bring it up because I don't want that to look puffy. I just really want it on my mobile lid only. Do you guys see how beautiful that is? I'm not getting any fallout or anything. That's why I also like to use my fingers because I'm just pressing it on there. I'm not putting a ton on so I can go back over if I need it. Oh, wow, that's gorgeous. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of take this, kind of blend that. I also think what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna go in with that same mustardy color. I just want to kind of put a little bit more of that right in through here. Guys, I'm playing, okay? This is just me playing. And when I know I'm not filming, oh Lord, that's when I really play. I would drive you guys nuts. You'd be like, I would never sit there and, and do those many steps and all of that. It's just because it's like any other hobby. I enjoy doing it. It's relaxing. I like experimenting with different things and do things I normally wouldn't. And then every now and then I'll hit on something and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to share that with you guys. Okay, so now I am going to curl my eyelashes. And I am, cause I did, uh, I did tight line that day. So I am gonna tight line, I'm not gonna water line, but I am gonna tight line. All right, and I brought out what I used, which is a dark brown. This is, what did I do with it? It is the L'Oreal Infallible and it's, there it is. So I'm in a tight line with that. Being very careful because most of the time I will scrub it into that lower lash line, but I don't want to do that this time. I just want to do it right in the tight line because I want the under part of my eyelash that look to be really soft. The mascara that I used that day was the Catrice. And today, because I've only used this once, and I'm gonna try it again. This is, this is called Falsies Surreal by Maybelline. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. Then we are gonna do the eyebrows, and I'm gonna do one eyebrow with you. So let me get my mascara on and I will be back. It is time to move on to the eyebrows. So I'm just using all the same things. I use the BDB, which stands for Billion Dollar Brow. Taupe is the color I use. So let's do that right now. This is the eyebrow brush that I'm currently using. I had to find an alternative. <laughs> I was using, this is kind of funny what I was using for years. It took me a while to get used to how skinny this is, but I have, and I like it. So this is an Anastasia, or Anastasia, Anastasia, I don't know. But yeah, I like it. It's got the spoolie, and it has this. So let's do this. The first thing I like to do is establish that bottom line. So I'm going to have it go diagonally because I don't like to go boom, boom. So we're going to go diagonally right to the arch with that first swipe there. And then I like to kind of start bringing things up. I do have to load more often with this brush. I am definitely taking it right on top of the skin. I like to go softer in the front. We will soften this whole thing when we're done. Right now, I just wanna... Okay, now I'm gonna establish a fake arch. So I'm gonna take it up a little high and then bring it back down. Think about how your eye 
I mean your um, brows are growing because that's the direction that you want to you know do your strokes so these grow this way I'm going to do that rather than um, just take it and just go ving I might take this line down but I'm going to soften it and uh, do that guys this is this is just how I do them everybody has their own thing there's really no right and wrong in my book okay so now I'm gonna soften I especially like to soften this bottom line so I'm gonna soften all of this even back here I like to pay attention to how low even if I have a couple hairs growing down here I like to stop this like if you were to take this and go to the outside of your nostril and the outside of where your eye stops that's technically where your brow should stop if you like that look again I'm I'm just giving you little things that I do okay so we have that the next thing I like to do is I like to go in with the benefit gimme brow this is a tinted gel and this is in the color 4.5 I like going a little bit darker than my powder for this because I like the dimension that it gives me plus I like using it and taking it right over the top of my white hairs and that's also nice gosh I got a lot of wild ones today. All right. Now, this is going to be softened through this next step. I do like to seal everything up. This is my favorite clear brow gel. This is by Patrick Ta. It's the lamination brow gel. It is clear. I love the applicator. I can take each hair and it just locks everything exactly where I put it. And it also kind of cleans up any blobs or anything that happened maybe. So I do like to kick these out a little. I like kind of a little bit of a messier look there in front. And the rest of this is just gonna go upwards and my goodness do I need to trim but we'll we'll get through this without it today I think I said that last time too okay now once it sets it sets and you really can't go over the top of it again because it'll ruin it it'll flatten it to the skin so it's like you got a little bit of time but it, it's it's enough to get done what you need to get done so now I'm gonna see you a little later I'm gonna do my other brow here's a little tip that I do I do create a false arch and so I do allow my brows to grow a little longer there and that's where this comes in because I drag them over where I drew with my powder and I bring the longer ones and this locks them there so it kind of gives the illusion that a little less of an illusion at least that there is hair there is brows that grow up there even though they don't so again that day I wasn't thinking about knowing I'm gonna have to link stuff so I tend to grab different stuff to play with so I grabbed this Laura Geller kit and I know a lot of you have it so hopefully if you want to do this look you have it too I do like it I just am not fond of the actual foundation um, powder you know the mineral powder foundation I'm, I'm not fond of that but I love this kit a lot so what I did is I used I used the blush here out of this kit it's very pretty so let me do that I'm gonna grab this this is an angled little tiny little blusher brush this is a BK Beauty and I will tell you the number of it it is 112 so I'm gonna just take this and load it I'm gonna knock it off I don't have anything um, to like I usually have a towel or something down here but I forgot to do that so I'm gonna tap it a couple times on the back here because I, I like to go in light and then build so now I'm gonna take this and I am gonna take it right where I like to put my blush it is so pretty I don't like blushes that are matte this one definitely isn't but I do like to go in and just kind of build it 
because I, I just, I'm so afraid I'm going to put too much on and it's hard to deal with that. And I like to take my blush a little over my nose, really lightly right there on the sides. I also like to take my blush kind of right in here, right in here as well. Isn't that pretty? Such a pretty color. Okay, um, so I'm done with that. That's all I used out of that palette, but I wanted to, I wanted to let you know that I did. So I am now gonna take uh, my buffer and just kind of soften that as well. I'm gonna grab my InstaSculpt palette again. And I am gonna go ahead and use that same color. This is the lightest of the two. And I'm gonna take this brush. No, I don't want that one. Yes. I've, I've used different brushes for this as well, but I'm, I grabbed this one. This is 209. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this. Now I'm not lining my lips. So kind of get that out of your uh, mind. Think of this, this is really truly contouring them. And so if you have thinner lips or if you just like this look, you don't have to just have thin lips to do this. It just gives you a softer look in general. Um, so I want to give the illusion that I have a little bit fuller lip here at the bottom. So I'm gonna take it right over the top of my lip here. And now I'm gonna take it right underneath because remember we're contouring. So I'm gonna take it right under there, soften it. I'm gonna let the light go down there, let it disappear under there, creating more of a pouty up lip here. So, but it's really important to also take that color on the lip itself. Yes, it's gonna be covered up with lipstick, but. All right, I'm not gonna take this all the way to the edge. Oops. I'm gonna take it just a little bit, and then I'm gonna just take it and draw right on top of my actual lip. So that line just kind of disappears really softly and soften. So I'm just gonna line the top. I'm gonna line very similar to how I would do this if I was using, if I were using an eye pencil, I mean a lip pencil. So I do take my lip pencil and this just a little above my natural lip line right through here because that's where gravity has taken over and everything's falling and tucking under. So this is starting to tuck under. So I'm going to lift it a little bit by lifting it right through here. But then I am tucking it because if I bring this and continue it, I don't know, I feel like it exaggerates then draws attention to almost my marionette lines. I don't know, it's something you can experiment to see what works for you. And that's it. So we have contoured our lips instead of line them with a liner. So now I'm gonna go in with, I'm gonna go in with, this is Charlotte Tilbury Kim KW. This is a classic nude, it's a true nude. I don't ever take my lipsticks necessarily all the way around. And then I'm gonna do my favorite topper. This is a Tom Ford. This is the, oh, I never can remember the name of it. It's, it's a bomb and it's sparkly like a diamond. It's absolutely gorgeous, but you wanna know something really sad because this was my new one. It broke, so. And I don't twist it up. I don't know what happened. I'm really sad because these are expensive. Um, anyway, so I just do my best and I just roll it up a little bit, a little bit, but it's my favorite topper. This is absolutely gorgeous. 
gives a milky appearance to any lipstick you put it over the top. It's just this beautiful built-in sort of sparkle, but it's not out over the top. I love what it does to any lipstick I put over the top of it. <laughs> it's tricky using this now. And yes, the diamond sparkle that you see on the outside, it's throughout the formula. It is more intense if you take it and, you know, take your lips and run it on the outside, but it is definitely through the entire formula. I just love it. Okay, so we are finished with this look. However, I am going to get my helper hair on today. Um, I'm going to film a few things for Instagram today. So let me go ahead and pick out the hair I'm going to wear and I will be back in a flash. So, although this was not recreated exactly, it's the same concepts. Unfortunately, I had to use totally different eye palettes for this, but I tried to get it as close as I could um, and explain kind of the whys and the hows. Everything else, the steps, the contouring, everything else is exactly what I did in that video. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you found it fun and inspiring and helpful. Thank you so much. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye-bye.